we have two important guests again today. We have Ella Garib and Abraham Christie, and they're going to bring us up to date on what's going on in the UK with um, with their ongoing situation and also what's happening to them in terms of the people that supposedly are trying to help them, but may not be. Welcome to World Beyond Belief, Ella and Abraham. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for inviting us again and supporting us. Yeah, it's thanks. our pleasure. Thanks for your support. Our pleasure. How would you like to start? Mm, perhaps I thought maybe to update on the situation, yes. uh, yeah. with, on what's gone on in the court just recently. Great. Uh, as of a few days ago, we um, withdrew from these proceedings as being unlawful and illegal. Uh, the court does not denied uh, me uh, an Article 6 of the European Convention and um, right articles uh, I, my, uh, my right to a fair trial, where, uh, where I have to, as a first respondent especially, I have to have the entire court material to be able to prepare my case. <clears throat> and um, they've been messing about uh, with this for a long time. Since my since my uh, latest uh, legal team got involved, and this has ha been happening since uh, mid April, and um, we consistently were consistently were discovering that um, a lot of documents are miss were missing, and um, uh, the documents that we had um, were also heavily redacted. In fact, um, from the beginning of the proceedings, from day one, on the 12th of uh, September, the day after the children been um, taken, yeah. kidnapped, uh, and until the 26th of January, uh, this is the last hearing where I participated in person, the whole time I've been having redacted documents without even knowing it. All other parties, all other, well, there are three other parties, local authority, then the representative for the chil uh, for the ch uh, uh, of the garden of the children, and, of course, Mr. Diamond. So all of these three parties, they had unredacted documents, and I had redacted ones. And that happened without any um, court order. On the 4th of August... That hearing was um, at front of the president of the family division of the Royal Court of Justice, uh, Sir James Bunby, who accepted um, our submission that uh, the Article 6 was not observed. And um, so he ruled, he produced a judgment saying that, yes, uh, that I have to have unrestricted, unrestricted access to unredacted documents. Now, we still having, we still having, uh, and this this hearing was adjourned until no, that was sorry, it was on the twenty third of July. Then another one, which is moved forward uh, for the fourth uh, of August now. So the other judge, uh, Judge Ryder, um, heard the situation, and the situation was exactly the same as previously. And he decided to dismiss everything and just to refuse the appeal totally, without any grounds whatsoever. We feel that it was pre-planned this way, because the 6th was the beginning of the care uh, proceedings where um, the, uh, the future of the children should be decided. So they made this, they, they arranged the uh, appeal, <clears throat> the appeal against uh, Puff, uh, Puffley's judgment, the initial well, where she's saying that we coached the children and the investigation were full and sorrow and so on. Uh, and um, so they placed this appeal just before care proceedings to cancel, to refuse us the appeal so the care proceedings will go ahead. And uh, we also discovered um, through some documents that we received that um, the care plan for the children already been decided. We now withdrew from the from the case, but we know what's going to happen. And uh, uh, the <clears throat> the intention of the local authority is to um, uh, withhold children for another six months, 
uh, I understand at least, before uh, passing them to the demon. And um, children are, are scared, they don't want to go to live with him, and um, it's, uh, it transpires uh, through uh, the assessment of demon produced by the psychiatrist. And this document is heavily redacted. But from, from what we read, um, it appears that his state of mind um, caused, uh, caused a lot of questions. Well, all I would say is that my, my interpretation of the documentation is that the um, local authority are reluctant to, to um, give the children to him for now because um, if anything does transpire and toward then um, their actions within this um, case will be, will be called into question once again. So, um, so we wait and see patiently. And of course I've been uh, reminded many times to stop the campaign, to stop talking, to stop doing interview. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's having an effect. And you should stop then. Right. I, I and think to, it and, is. Yes, and to, <clears throat> to assist them in continuing uh, kidnapping children and uh, putting mothers to jail and to silence uh, those who speak out. There is, for example, <laughs> there is a piece of information which um, uh, came our way just recently. And this is the story of, um, of a woman who's... Uh, uh, oh a mother whose children been kidnapped, taken away from her. She's been put to jail. She kept talking in jail and uh, finally they uh, injected her and she died. And nobody would ever, ever find out about it if it wasn't up to uh, Gloria Musa, another uh, Nigerian, victim. Another Nigerian mother, mother and, her, and her partner Chiwa Musa. Chiwara. Yeah, they, they, they had seven children taken from them by the social services here in the UK. Um, oh. Two of them when they, were, when they were very, very young, and one of them they took from her at birth. Uh, the story can, oh. yeah, the story can be found, and they were, so they took seven children, and they gave them seven years each imprisonment each. And they were being represented by... Unfabricated, unfabricated uh, evidence. Yeah, and they were being represented by the Mackenzie friends. Um, Who also... The story, the story can be found, all the information can be found on a blog, um, I think it's called Butlin Cat. This fellow, he, he, he knows the story, he was a good supporter. And supporter he was a supporter of the family. And the girl that died in prison, that the Moosas, the story that the Moosas shared with everybody, her name was Rachel Patriarch. And we wouldn't even know her name or the fact that she had her children removed from her unlawfully and that she she spoke up. She spoke out, out about it and she was imprisoned. And then... Well, Ella told you And I don't... Happened. Ella an told accident. You. Number seven comes up twice here. Seven children, seven, seven years. years. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They they love this is, they yeah. love they love this to is play. Kabbalistic yeah, they love, they numerology. Love their, they love their gematria. But um you know, we're getting a lot of people a lot of support now. And um it seems that since we've since we've um declared our um our position regarding the Mackenzie friends, who seem to be seem to have attracted um, support from some um, I don't know from people who seemed uh, they seemed to reluctant to to get involved or who were distancing themselves from from the case. But since we've since we've um, uh, <coughs> disclosed disclosed the um, the shenanigans of the Mackenzie friends counterintelligence operatives, um, our understanding is that. Um, Belinda McKenzie and Sabine McNeil of the McKenzie Friends operation, if you will. Um, we've learned that they're, they're charity scammers. They, they do charity scams. And they're counterintelligence operatives that infiltrate. They've infiltrated the truth, the so-called truth movement in inverted commas, if you will. Um, Belinda 
first really rate, her head really was raised above the parapet as it were in um, 2000 when was it 2009 I think she was um, investigating the 9-11 she was a 9-11 truther as it were in the UK but we now realize that she was really her job is to infiltrate infiltrate these movements to gauge public sentiment and report back to her handlers and also to um, attempt to um, um, to manipulate to manipulate public 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 sentiment and I would say also to redir redirect the energy for example as they done recently, as they've recently uh, during the mm -hmm, yeah. during this uh, appeal hearing which as I'll, I'll re-mention on the 4th of August where they performed their act their theatre put up by Sabine uh, McNeil and uh, Belinda Mac McKenzie and um, uh, Sabine returned to the UK on the 3rd. You were talking about the McKenzie friends and the, the uh, how Sabine and the McKenzie friends are forming the first line of defense by very, getting these getting these cases. Very good Paul, yes. They both have aspirations to be MPs. Sabine McNeil has aspirations of being an MEP. She courts, she courts the um, association of MPs. And um, who is it? John Hemmings. John Hemmings. John Hemmings and others, and regularly quotes MPs and regularly goes to Brussels to petition. Okay, now we, we we've learned that an MEP would be a European Union MP, right? Absolutely, yes, because um, the European Union and and the jolly old um, United States. They're passing laws to legalize paedophilia and bestiality amongst other um, behaviors. They're passing laws stealthily. So in the European Union, they're using the Lisbon Treaty to pass laws that are um, legalizing paedophilia. But, um, Brit you know, without anyone having, without the, the, the people having a say on it, with nobody having a vote. And so... It will be legal in it's already it's already tolerated in Belgium and Germany and legalized in Portugal already and, and legalized in Portugal thank you and so thanks and yeah and so um, it's when 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 British people realize that they've legalized paedophilia via the back door it's going to be um, yeah. It will be it will be it will be interesting to see the reaction of 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 the um, British population, uh, and hopefully they're not they're not too um, how, what would I say subdued with the um, fluoride in fluoride in the um, fluoride in the water and the um, and the uh, television. So. That's what they're doing, and we believe, and we feel that Belinda and Sabine are presenting themselves as child. What is it, child? Child rights. Uh, child rights activists. This activists. is their new their, campaigners. This, yeah, that's what they are. Child rights campaigners. So they they are privy to these to these laws. They know they know that these laws are coming. They don't tell anybody. Well, it's already happening now. That's what we're observing in the court right now. Yes. That the uh, that the uh, the sodomites, the rapists of the children, are not prosecuted anymore. And, and we've saw even in, the, in her judgment saying that uh, bestiality and incest is an unnormal behaviors. Absolutely. And we in, in Puffley's judgment, that's what I mean. And, we've, and we understand that, we understand that Linda and Sabine are positioning themselves to take advantage of these... Um, of these laws and to facilitate to facilitate the um, social acceptance of these laws we feel that Belinda is a, is a sodomite apologist she's an apologist apologist for the cult she's shown this time and time again and we believe that they they anticipated these laws and um, they have positioned themselves to take advantage of this and to um, assist in the availability of children to the cult and to assist the social service and other institutions in the trafficking, trafficking and theft of children. And we're talking about 
very, very large numbers. Like last year, there were 150,000 children uh, gone missing. Mm. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, the UK. Uh, does anyone ever in the UK, ask? Yeah, UK. Yes, in the UK. So it's uh, anybody asks about it. You know where these children are going. What's happening with these children? Yeah. Well, are they all being killed? Well, we don't we don't know. Some of them look. They're going all over. The, you know, they're being trafficked around. So for different for various reasons, um, some end up in prostitution. Some some go to. Um, a cult adopted by cult members. A lot of them are going into adoption agencies that social workers who are coming and taking the children, who are removing the children from homes, some of the social workers have financial interest in these um, foster and adoption agencies. So, right. And, and also they're, they're probably being groomed for the next generation of yeah. pederast and Satanists, yes. so the ones that survive don't end up with a better life than the ones that are killed right off. Well, oh, yes. it's and just they, horrifying. And there would be scope of it. Yeah, and, and, and you can see that that it's being it's being moved on so many different fronts to be accepted as the norm in so many different ways that seem unrelated, but they're really very much related, like the legalization of gay marriage and, Absolutely. you know, the, the normalization of any kind of sexual preference. Oh, and then in the United States, we have the uh, selling of body parts for aborted, uh, for aborted kids, yeah, 20 children. months, children. Yeah. I'm sorry, kids. Yeah. And what are they doing? Are they, um, are these the ones that they're um, putting into, are these the fetal cells that they're putting into the food supply? That and the organs are being sold. Um, they also take the whole body. Some of them want the entire body for some reason. Wow. Well, in China... Yeah, they're... and it's... Go on. In China, in China they're, 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 consuming, they're consuming aborted fetuses in the, in the restaurants now. It's a delicacy, apparently. Oh my goodness! This is where we are. You see, <laughs> this is how far we fall. This is where we are. Yeah, and and very well said. Are you still there? Yeah, we're still there. We're interested in what you're saying. We know that this is happening all over the world. Um, and uh, yesterday we were listening to something on uh, Ted Heath. Oh, Ted Heath! Finally, they're getting around to looking into Ted Heath's thing. Mm -hmm. But Ted Heath doesn't have too many uh, people coming forward because he killed them. And he's dead as well. So um, this is what they're doing. They're using historic. And, yeah, and they set up the, all of their legislation to deal with historic cases. of uh, Tavistock Convention. Another, yeah. Another Tavistock. Yeah. So, so current cases... They're not being investigated. They're not being investigated enough. because they're, they've only set, they've set up the legislation to deal with historic so it's they're having they're finding a they're finding a wow they're finding on many fronts at the moment that's what I'd say yeah yeah they're finding on many Here. fronts because um, they've grown they've expanded you know and with the economic deprivation in many countries uh, Europe they'll we feel that they'll that they'll definitely they'll make war in Europe they prefer civil wars. Because um, as blood sacrifice, yeah, as a blood sacrifice, um, similar to what's going on in Ukraine at the moment, they prefer civil wars because um, they're more lucrative. They can come up and buy up all everything, um, everything very cheaply once they've created a civil war. We're, talk we're speaking on a larger scale now. We're talking about the um, the larger plan of these. Um, of this cult. Of this cult, yeah. What can we? What do we call them? Is it a Babylonian? Is it a Babylonian Talmudic Sodomite death cult? Because it traces. We trace. We trace them back to to Babylonia. How far do you see this well, going back, Paul? Yeah, I, I I can trace it back that far too. You know, uh, Satan, uh, Lucifer, Moloch, Baal, uh, 
Osiris, all these uh, names for the same uh, entities. And I think we have the same thing in the Satan's cults. I mean, we have the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, I think that uh, these cults got travel under so many names. Yeah. And they switch back and forth. The synagogue of Satan, the Illuminati, the Jesuits, uh, the Zionists, right, uh, the yeah. Freemasons. <clears throat> they all do this. And this is all part of their uh, new world order, if you will. Absolutely. That's right. So, so we have to look forward to that coming in as the uh, Pope comes to the United States and really uh, kicks off what I think is going to be much worse than Agenda 21 about in the yeah. middle of September. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a wild ride. We have to really be on top of this stuff. And pedophilia or peda, pederast. Pederast, yeah. This has to be uh, this has to be known so that we can stop it. Because if you can't protect your children, what's the use of having a society? Paul, you, we can't stop it in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's their land. This is their land, and these are their laws. We have to disengage. Okay, say more. Say more about that, Abraham. That's really interesting. Because by fighting them, fighting them, giving them our energy. By staying in these these societies, you know, remaining a part of it, we are supporting it. We 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 should disengage, take our energy away from them, create our, our own environment where where child sodomy isn't tolerated because it's against natural law. It's against universal law. Not because we're living in an environment where someone else can impose their laws upon us. This is what's happening. So we must disengage because these are, they've become a cursed land and anything, their karmic reward, we will we'll reap the same reward if we stay with them, if we live amongst them. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah I we're... absolutely agree with you, Abraham. The, wow. the key is to disengage yeah. and stop any involvement most with them. Most definitely, most definitely. However, we're in a bit of a catch-22 because they've taken the children, so we must continue. Right. And it's not just, not solely, at least from Gabriel. There are many children who are um, captives, who are captives to this, to this cult, even unconsciously, even being captive merely by the television, as, as, as we know, after 36. By the brainwashing, uh-huh. Uh, as, that's right, by the, by the, um, by the drugs masquerading as foods that they're being that they're being um, fed so there are many many victims and we feel that if we can if we can assist by disseminating the information and by helping um, raise awareness and giving the children encouraging the children to have the courage to break free or adults to break free of this cult then that's what we'll do until we've um, until we've we're finally till we're finally free but what, one of the things we're doing, um, maybe this is not the right time, but we're, 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 we're establishing um, tropical paradise gardens where, um, where victims of, of, these, um, of these cults may come if they escape and rehabilitate. And that's one of, the, um, one, of the, um, one of our goals, as it were, that we're working on at present. But, That's yeah. wonderful. But yes, definitely disengage. But it's very difficult because if you're born into this cult, if you're born into this Babylonian, you know, if you're born into this Babylonian death cult, unaware, and you accept that death, this is it. That death is inevitable. That it's a Babylonian sodomite death cult. You're going to be sodomized. You know, death is inevitable. If you're born into this and you're programmed to accept this, then it's understandable if if you find it difficult. To accept sort of ideas that that will contradict that will contradict that. For example, you know, there's a, there's a school of thought that says death is neither inevitable nor necessary. But then, if you you know if you've been raised in a Babylonian death cult, you might find it difficult to even um, play with to entertain that idea. So, the mass um, mind manipulation, mind control. The job that, that Tavistock and Rand have done 
you know, people people really need to be they need to be made aware of what's going on, that they're having their perception managed and they're they're being told what to think and and how to live and when and they've to, been used. And when to die, yeah. They've been used as well. Yeah. Exactly. I think that I think that you're right on right on target with the disconnecting. And I think disconnecting the first thing we always say is television. Because that I think without television they'd have a hard time um succeeding in in their plan mm -hmm. television absolutely. absolutely we agree yeah. with you yeah we don't we don't neither of us watch television we don't have a television and we don't want one thank you very much and alisa gabriel never watched television as well that's perhaps that's why they were able to talk yeah oh. i think you presented a really um uh, unique situation that the uh that the cults weren't expecting with uh, those children. Um, and, if, you know, if that situation could occur other places, you know, having loving parents, are you still with us? Yes, yes, yeah. we're listening. Okay. If they had loving parents and, and listening parents and uh, moral parents, like these kids were lucky enough to have, you know, we'd have more of this, more of this coming out. But being involved in a death cult and watching TV, and then you pile on the psychotropic drugs, you pile on the GMOs, the fluoride. Go ahead. What's so what's your poisoned, take on? What well, the, no, on? beautiful, Paul. They poison. They poison their. They poison the people's minds, the children's minds. They poison the water supply. They poison the air, and they poison the food. Exactly. What Full. else you got? Well, yeah. That's why they must disengage and stop supporting the scout. Right. Go into a little bit more on what exactly you think that would look like for somebody that's like not nah, 20, 30 years old and just waking up to what's going on. How would that disengage look, uh, you think? You have to have faith in, in God. You have to have faith. And then you would be able to disengage. Because if you're born into the Babylonian death cult, it's, it's very, it can be quite difficult for people to leave. They may know that it's wrong. They may know that it's going to lead to a box in the hole in the ground. They may know this. And yet, there's no alternative. But we, we, we understand that we um, are tropical beings. We're tropical beings and our natural habitats are tropical paradise gardens. Not these Babylonian concrete jungles. With, square, with, with squares and rectangles and right angles. We, we are natural beings and we should, we should live in nature. It's our natural habitat. And um, all of our problems can be solved in a garden. It's, that, it's really that simple. Um, and it's the use of fire, the naked flame, the tree of knowledge of good and evil in your Bible, if you will, Paul. In Genesis, it speaks of Adam and Eve in the garden. They can eat from any tree in the garden. They're in a tropical paradise garden. They can eat from any tree in the garden. They're even permitted to partake from the tree of eternal life. No prizes for guessing what that is. However, there's one tree they are divinely inspired not to touch nor eat from. And that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is all in your Genesis, the biblical creation. So there's one tree there, they're divinely inspired not to touch or eat from. And that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of, of good and evil is the naked flame, fire. Prometheus was punished for bringing the naked flame on the surface of the earth. Fire destroys. The Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Earthly Mother, they provide food, fruits on the trees. We take them and then we put them in the fire, the fire of death. But they've already been cooked in the fire of life, the Heavenly Father, the Son, and grown and nurtured in the bosom of the Earthly Mother. These are our foods, and fire is the cause of many problems. And when the people realize that we must return to nature and leave behind the Babylonian death cults to their own devices 
to reap the karmic reward. Fire worshipping death. It's a fire worshipping death cult. And you lose 80% of the nutrients, of the nutrient value in the food, you lose up to 80% by cooking. So that's 80% of the work, the agriculture, the growing, the transportation, all the energy that's gone into providing that food, you lose 80% by cooking. Cooked and you're food killing is, yourself slowly. Cooked food is poison. Cooked food is addictive. And cooked food kills. And when humanity return to nature and eat from nature, they'll, they'll, they'll be happy in nature. But whilst they continue to partake and eat from the table of the Babylonian, fire-worshipping, sodomite death cult, whilst you eat from these devils, you will be entrapped in their system. Especially, except, especially if you consume... Uh, blood products. All ancient traditions. Kosher or kosher, kosher it could or be kosher. halal. It, it doesn't matter. It still contains blood. We are not. We are, we are prohibited from all ancient scriptures. Prohibited us from eating blood products because, as the Talmudic Jews know, the blood is the seat of the soul, not the heart. The river of life. That's what carries the life force of the being and this is where kosher and halal foods came from because it was an attempt to remove the blood but as we've said before you cannot remove the blood from the flesh because the flesh is made from the blood no such thing as halal or kosher meat it's just another another trick it's a trick right yes yeah, another trick another another bit of cult word magic Yes. All right, to indulge, yeah, think, to, to indulge their to indulge their bloodlust, and they know that the consumption we prohib we were prohibited from eating these things because blood products, they create schizophrenia, which is a compartmentalization of this of this behavior, so that one is able to compartmentalize it and continue in your day to day social framework. Since it's so unnatural to consume the flesh of other beings, of other that sentient, we have to of other sentient beings, the yeah. other sentient beings, but we have to compartmentalize. Absolutely. And no, but and majority of people are they're, they're plagued with for a mild form of schizophrenia, compartmentalization of the of the trauma, because it is it is a trauma to eat to to realize that you're eating the flesh of another sentient being. If you if you really look into your heart, you know it's wrong. Right. Just to go back to something you mentioned earlier, uh, I can remember uh, working with Waldorf schools. <clears throat> and uh, they had an experiment where they'd show that blood was circulating around a chick embryo before the heart was formed. Before the heart was formed. Well done, Paul. Brilliant. So it has a life of its own, and it had a movement, yeah. a movement of its own. Also, we watched, I don't know how long ago, just a couple of weeks ago now, Mindy and I watched uh, the processes by which they killed animals to make them, was it kosher? They had, they had, honest to God, they were like torture devices that they would put these cattle in, and they would... They would they would slice open the this is going to be horrible. They would slice open the neck, and the animal would struggle and struggle and bleed to death. Mm -hmm. And what we thought of while we were watching this process was adrenochrome, because mm -hmm. we knew that that cow was just littering that blood with adrenochrome. Yeah. And and I'll bet you that even though the kosher the kosher meats were distributed to most people. I bet that the blood of those things was was taken by the cults, uh, synagogue of Satan or the Jesuits or the Zionists or whoever the cult was, uh, because I can imagine that would be really a valuable uh, store, store lucrative, of blood. Lucrative business now, blood, the blood business, for particularly the blood of young. After they've they've recently released some scientific research that shows that the um, that the blood of young mice are reinvigorated um, older mice. So yeah. And the trend is is everybody well people 
us um a dreading a dreading the death oh the fear of death the fear the fear yes. of death yeah and of course you know you want to by fearing it you're actually attracting it to yourself and that's right. what all these practices like eating <clears throat> dead flesh how can you expect for a living being to thrive by putting something dead in it Death comes from death, and life comes always from life. It's not possible to derive life and eternal uh, use by by taking life from others, by uh, uh, in, by stealing the energy from others. How can you expect? I mean, this is very low consciousness. Oh, it really is. It really is. is I that, think that's is the. That, uh, isn't it obvious? I think keeping consciousness low. Is the whole death cult uh, sodomy thing? Very good. Yeah. That's I think how when I think it. you can get locked in your lower chakras, uh, participating in sex that way. Very good, Paul. Yes, and that's why we recommend. That's why we advocate the consumption of green, of many greens, because they will activate. They act to help to activate the heart chakra and raise us out of our base of chakras, as it were. But you're totally right. The um, the agenda is definitely to keep to maintain a low a low level vibration uh, you know a, a base chakra vibration on on the planet and the sodomy and the child sacrifice is an integral part of them of them uh, maintaining this vibration right i think that's probably that relates to our recent uh was it supreme court decision to legalize gay marriage now i have gay friends and i i'm sympathetic with that lifestyle to a certain degree, but I also know that sodomy is a uh, is destructive to the evolution of consciousness. Very good. Uh, and not that you know, you, 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 it's hard to condemn people because they're doing what what they what they what they desire to do, and it's or they're programmed uh, to do. Go ahead. Or program. Sorry to, to interrupt. Or program to do. Because uh, look at the um, the subliminal uh, subliminal um, advertising. Look at the uh, the water pollution or um, by estrogens. Oh, uh, the what what estrogens? Yes. What about estrogens in bread? I mean, not many people know that uh, the the bread is the uh, wheat kernel. The wheat kernel, Paul. Um, we've only been eating um, processed wheat products for the last 200 years or so. And the wheat grain, I got this information from a friend, David Wolf. He's a pioneering um, raw food um, researcher. And it seems that the wheat grain contains an abundance of estrogen, female hormones. And it produces an abundance of, of this in order to um, prevent animals from overgrazing it. And... Um, and when we when we process these grain into breads, pizzas, pasta, um, pastries, br breakfast cereals, um, spaghetti, macaroni, biscuits, crackers, what have you, um, we concentrate them, and we've noticed that um, cultures that consume. Um, a preponderance of these wheat, of these wheat-based products, they have a higher rate of um, homosexuality. It seems that these these estrogen these 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 estrogen-rich foods are actually contributing to the increased rates of um, homosexuality and breast and, cancer in women. Oh yes, and the way in which the con overconsumption of these um, estrogen-rich um, um, wheat-based product, processed wheat-based products manifest itself in, in women is in the increased incidence of breast cancer due to the hormonal imbalance of too much estrogen. The Arab Spring. We found that the economic deprivation or, or the economic terrorism that is, um, that is waged by the global bankers, we found that, that the people didn't, they didn't really revolt until they had no bread, until they couldn't afford to buy bread. That was when they revolted. Because not only does bread contain an abundance of estrogen and cause hormonal balance 
for, for, for many. Um, but this bread also contains opioid wheat. Wheat kernels also contain opioid sequences which are heroin-like substances, which make it even more addictive. And all, then you add into the, um, into the equation the caramelized carbohydrates, the sugars that are, that are in bread when you, when, you, when, you, um, when, you cook, when you cook these wheat products. So then you've got, so you've got estrogens, which are addictive, and they, and they cause hormonal imbalance. Carcinogens. Yes, and then you've got the, yeah, then you've got the carcinogenic, um, what is it, um, acrylamide. And um, you've got the opioid sequences and the sugars. You've got a recipe there. Yeah, you've got a great recipe for disaster there. And wheat-based products, are they appear to be the most difficult food that people people um, have a problem letting go of. And this right. is what, what part of the disengagement we're talking about. And also, you know, this goes way back to, I can remember in the early 60s, the Kinsey Report. Have you ever heard of that? Alfred Charles Kinsey, the father of the sexual revolution. He was a cult. Exactly. He was a cult member, and his um, one of his job was to uh, undermine the moral, the morals of of of, um, of Western civilization. He was. Um, it was more of a modern manifestation of a sabotage CV, the cult of reversal. These are Satanists. He's, yes. He's a cult. He's yeah. He's a fully paid up cult member. Um, uh, Alfred Charles Kinsey. When I was growing up, I guess I was about 15 or 16, when a friend of mine got a hold of this book. <clears throat> and we read it. We read every paragraph, every word, and believed every word of it. You know, what? what's a 15, 16-year-old boy interested in? He's Absolutely. interested in sex. If he's been programmed to be interested in sex. That's an interesting. That's an interesting thing because that has got to come into how we're programmed. I want you to get into a little bit about how we are programmed, definitely programmed. Our sexuality is programmed into us. You've got, you know, in the 17th century, who is it? Who is it? Jacob Frank. You've got this um, tradition. Who have you got after Kinsey? Then you've got whom after Kinsey? Oh, Bob, you've got uh, uh, Hugh Hefner. You've got Hugh Hefner, very good, yes. He's a, then you've got your popular Hugh Hefner. You've got Freud. Who else have you got? You've got in the UK. Holy Bernays. You've got Crowley, then Crowley, Bernays. Then you've got, um, what's his name? Peter Wrighton. You've got Barbara Kahan and Peter Wrighton. In the, yes. So these and are then all. you've got the whole sexual revolution that came with the hippie movement, orchestrated by Tavistock. Tavistock, and these are all these are all all the same cult, all the same people, and their their attempt is to right. undermine and to sexualize, hypersexualize, hypersexualize humanity. Freud, they're, they're Freud, they're Freudian fakers. These 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 are the people who, who attempt, like the Tavistock psychiatrists, like. Claire Sturge and others, who, who at a recent conference at the Four Paper Buildings, is suggesting that bisexuality is bisexuality our ideal state. This is all part of the same agenda, to create sexual ambivalence. They, they deny the work of Carl Gustav Jung and, ancient, and, and even more ancient work. We are androgynes, we are androgynous. Androgyny is a Greek word. Andros for man and genie for woman. Or andros for masculinity and genie for femininity. Androgyny is the harmonious coexistence of masculinity and femininity within single individual. We are not sexual beings. We are asexual beings. We transcend sex. We, we, we transcend the base sex chakras. Jung spoke of the androgyny of Christ and... We understand that the, andro the, the, the androgyne is the archetypal archetype, the original human state. And these um, Tavistock uh, mind controllers, they, they attempt to manage the perception of the, of the global population to believe that we are sexual, that we are purely sexual beings. Were we sexual beings, there would be no need for Walt Disney... MTV and BBC to present sexual imagery in their programming. Why, if we are sexual beings, do we have to be programmed to be sexual beings? 
if it's our natural state. So in nature, we would revert to our natural state, to the androgyne. It's all part of their agenda, Paul, to, um, to undermine your moral, you know, to undermine the morals of, of, of humanity and to, and to, to manage us into, into their new world order. And uh, the children are lost. The agenda is to cut children from parents, to cut this bond. Yes. And to, so to deprive our children from the parental guide, uh, guidance. Right, and was, and yeah. the discipline as well that parents can provide for the children, or to to help them, to, you know, to 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 develop this uh, um, part of their character. We saw quite a while ago the girls, they they, they you know, thirteen, fourteen girls. They're saying that if they're not sexually available, then they're invisible. Yeah. Invisible. That's, that's, and that's this not, is the that, situation yeah. our children are in. To have to conform to the, yeah, to society. And, and the, pro the problem is, is that it's um, it's no good to po point fingers on someone. We're all in it, and uh, we each each of us in, um, individually is responsible for allowing the situation to develop. And uh, it's a resp our responsibility is to to do something about it. Yeah, and I think the first thing to do would be to turn off TV because that that brings sex right into the right into the living room. Exactly. exactly. <clears throat> oh yes, and at such an early age, the babies are so sexualized. I mean, yeah. two, three years old. Yeah. It's just well, it horrible. Was it was planned well, that way, it, Mindy. In Germany, in Germany, uh, at five years old, children are having lessons in school. Um, uh, where sexual positions are taught. It's I unbelievable. Mean, I, I just can't even... I, it's so hard for me to grasp that this is really happening, and yet I know it is. But how, how, can, how can anyone stand by and allow it? I mean, why do parents still allow their children to go to school? The first thing they should do is keep the children home from school well, until yes. this can be changed. Yeah, well... We've, we've, we, I, I feel we've slumbered and, and, and they have all of the, um, they've usurped all the positions of power. It's, look, it's, a, it's Babylonia. We're, we're in, right. ba we're in ba you know, it's, Bab it's Babylon. We're in Babylon. So we, yes. stay, we stay with the Babylonians and we become like them or we disengage and we create our own Zion. That's, it's, you know, that's how we see it. It's that clear cut. It's the separation of the wheat from the chaff now, Paul. I, we stay with them and we eat, we eat from, from the same table as them. We eat their, their drugs masquerading as food. We eat other sentient beings. Or, we, or we, we leave. And we eat from the table of the earthly mother. So you better decide which side of the line you want to be on for this. And if you can get away from concrete, the concrete and steel crazy-making machine and get yourself into nature... And start going back to reality. Start doing things like examining your sexuality, you know, or examining uh, well, how you, where you put your attention. It, it's going to really, it really makes a difference. You have to have to start saving your own life. I think. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and showing growing your children. Growing your own food as well. Up, growing your own, growing showing your, your children. Food, yeah. yeah, growing your own food and showing the children that that food comes from trees. Not from the packet in the supermarket, you know. I know, I know. It's quite frustrating for me, though. My my children are all grown now, uh -huh. but um, I I have so little influence over them that that they prefer to listen to the mainstream culture than anything I have to say, and it's such a source of of disappointment and sadness for me that they can't even hear anything I have to say because I'm just a crazy woman, you know? Wow. But we've, uh, like, our children have been ripped from us in every way, you Absolutely. know, whether they've been stolen like your children have been stolen Absolutely. or or just, you know, metaphorically Absolutely. stolen from us because no, we have no, yeah. there's no connection left where we can communicate to them these 
the, this wisdom that you know we've we've come to and we can see through they they have them it's so sad you know but they can but they can escape they, they could they but, but they don't want to well we have to look they we, like it you know no they don't like it they don't like it they're just they're just um fitting in they're just conforming to what there is if we if there was a, if there was an alternative if there was a real alternative they would go for it if 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 people like yourselves if there was a community of people living naturally and there are communities and rejuvenating yeah and rejuvenating i'm sure they would i'm sure they'd be attracted to it but you know it's it's what have we got to offer the children that's what it is what is there to offer what is the alternative Right, we have to offer them an, an alternative. In a natural environment, children would, would behave naturally. It's only yeah. natural that we behave unnaturally in these artificial, unnatural environments. Paul. As we start to eat natural food, return to our natural environment, so our behavior, it corresponds that our behavior would become, would be more natural. So exactly. It's a question of... Um, just establishing, just establishing a, a, a viable alternative instead of attempting to fight the machine or to fight Babylon, disengage and create your own environment because they shall reap their own reward. All of these, um, what are they? Are they cat is it cat cationic minerals? They're going to be pulled back into the bowels of the earth. Many people can sense that we're in a time of great change. But often people don't have the energy to, to make the changes in to make the changes in their life. But those who don't go with the change, they'll be forced to change. Yeah, well, they they want them to the the cult wants them to change in a different way, kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Well, a that's right. it's a, it's a bigger change is happening, bigger than this cult, uh -huh. and this is what they don't see. It's the end of their time and uh, the consciousness of the planet already been elevated and it's a matter of material material Catching matter up. to catch up and this was happening now and um, by um, by cleansing yourself uh, but stop by stop eating meat by eating naturally um, it's all um, we have to elevate we have to elevate our consciousness and of course, physical is just a part of it. Yes, people. Many people say, "Oh, the afterlife, the afterlife." Oh, I'm going to have heaven is here on earth. We create. We are here to co-create paradise on earth, tropical paradise gardens. And this is something the cult don't want you to know. They want to create their artificial fire worshiping death cult cities, and they wish to keep everyone there trapped in the death cult and sucked. Their energy. This is their, this is their belief system. They believe in death. They glorify death. They worship death. And this is what they get. This is this is the whole the whole the whole system is is is, is a set up. Uh, we to, celebrate life to achieve exactly that. Absolutely, it's a dead end. We celebrate life. We walk beneath the fire of life, the heavenly Father, the Son. We eat from the tree of life. We drink the water of life. We breathe the breath of life. And we cleanse our river of life, Paul. We celebrate life. And they celebrate death. Yeah, it's really funny because they're terrified of death at the same time. Well, but this would exactly, the, this that's exactly why they what they attract. Exactly. Because that's what they're focused on, Paul. That's where they're putting their energy. And uh, they will be left behind while the um, <clears throat> the rest of humanity is uh, elevating. And um, I hope I hope age. the some of them will start to see that. That would be great. Let's hope that we can wake a few people up with this, the insights from this broadcast. We're enslaved to this. Well, if I do anything, I've got to do it for money. I can't do it for love. I can't do it because I like to do it and I like to give to somebody. I have to do it for money. And they've created a system 
So that has to happen. But I think that's going to be another part of the uh, breaking away. This is a part of the, tr the transition will be using silver, gold, and copper. Because this is, this is already happening. Because of their um, debauchery of the, of the currency supply, the paper currency, we will, we will revert back to using um, silver and gold and copper for a while. And then from there, the silver and gold and copper will be, um, I feel it's going to go back into the earth. I feel that any silver, gold and copper that we have will be buried in the tropical paradise gardens. So the money, the money issue will be dealt with as well, Paul. It's, it's, you know, it's not even as if we really have to work too hard. It's, it's all quite simple. We, we have to attract real friends. We must have real skills, real money. And right. It's a real yeah. habitat and something else. <laughs> That's so good. But yeah, real, real skills, money, real, real friends, friends and real skills will yeah. help you. Will help you in this great time of change. And real money. No? Yeah, real money, real friends, and real skills. Will help right. you in this time of change, yeah. So the money issue will be resolved. And that, there's, um, there's a blog, it's called um, Co-Creating Our New Earth. The girl, her name is Bronnie Bronwyn from New Zealand. On her blog, she talks about the No Money Society. She's done a lot of work in that regard. That's why I'm mentioning her. Yeah. So there are a lot of there are a lot of initiatives regarding the No Money Societies. Um, Paul, the Greeks, the Greeks right now they're, they're they're doing a lot of bartering. So it's happening, you know, by default, as it were. It's happening. But that's great. I, I think I hope that we can capture all these blogs and things that, that you're mentioning. I remember the one uh, early on where uh, Gloria Mossy lost her children. Musa. We'll try Musa, to, we'll try to well get done. together and, yes. and get a okay. list of those for and put it below the uh, put it below this this video. Okay, Paul, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. I think it's important. The, 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 the child stealing. No, this this <laughs> our case it's um it's it's one of the few which um, came out so big. I don't know because of the circum. <laughs> I Many. wouldn't say coincidences. It's meant to. It 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 was written the, like that. The synchronicity is poor. However, <clears throat> the this we feel that this case is perhaps going to come out more and more now, because the scale of it, the scale of this phenomena just gone so big that. Despite, despite the fact that all the structures of this of this establishment of this Babylonian structure is is been created to to do it to steal the children to main to um, uh, sexualize uh, the children to steal uh, to do, to steal money from people to economically enslave them. Um, it's all coming to a head now. You're right. It's it's yes. um, in spite in spite of that, it's still now it it became this this crime became so big that it's now seeping through. You see, they cannot maintain it anymore. They can't. They can't maintain the and, secrets and, and, anymore. And and this how they've been doing it for ages. They've been they've been stealing children. They've been silencing mothers. Or they've been initially they've been targeting vulnerable children, vulnerable uh, vulnerable um, families, the families who probably did not have enough education or enough means to protect themselves. And um, but now it became so big that uh, now they're taking children from the people who can, who can resist, who can uh, say, no, it's not going to happen. You're not going to have our children. Getting We're going to not give you our children. Yeah, and this is why, and this is why they've got an issue because they've never come up against anything. They haven't come across anything like this before. Their 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 their, their mechanism worked. Their template worked until it didn't. And even what's his name, Munby, Munby warned them. The president the of president the family family division. family division, yeah, James Munby, he he warned them of the the power, to be aware of the power of social media more than a year ago. And now they're faced with this issue. And, 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 and it's, if it were not for the internet, 
we wouldn't people wouldn't know about this case exactly but everything happens in the right time and this is what's happening now and uh, this is their they, black would, swan. they would they would be blind if they don't don't see what's happening this is because their black swan the further yeah. it goes what worse it becomes um, the more people getting involved this this case is it obviously attracting a lot of attention and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and they bungle and they keep bungling they bungle and we all warned them, them in february sorry you we ahead. warned them in february at the russian embassy we warned them. We told them quite clearly that this case could potentially become a cause celebre and from thence a question of national security. They ignored our warnings. The Mackenzie friend MI5 um, operative practically spat venom at the mere suggestion that their little um, that they could have that they could that they might not be able to handle handle this situation. Um, this is the arrogance of, of of these people, and now they're even now this same person, Belinda McKenzie, a counterintelligence operative from McKenzie Friends, who's been exposed time and time again, but because of her um, her PR skills, as it were. She's able to convince some of the people some of the time. And now she's um, Tavis speaking the case. She's, she just released a 30-minute 30, 30 video, Tavis speaking the case, attempting to close down, attempting to redirect the energy, telling the um, public that, oh, she's leaving. Ella has already asked her publicly to step away from the case and to remove herself from the case. But because they have, they have set up charity scams, um, fleecing the general public um, in relation to this case and set themselves up as child rights activists. Many of the public, uh, they're fooled, they have fooled many of the public into sending them funds. And this is the reason why they have been so reluctant to step away from the case, even though we haven't made contact with them in five months. So... Um, this is the and they keep themselves getting involved. And they will not let go of the case. And today she's been Tavis speaking the case, saying um, that there's been an interim care order and that... And um, the failure, the, the and campaign the fa is failure. So she's just been Tavis speaking. And um, she says she's leaving the UK. This is what they do. They, um, they love theatre, they love the dramatic. Oh, I'm leaving the UK for good. Goodbye, the UK. I'm leaving the UK for good. And the, well, at the last hearing, we had um, one of the last hearing, recent hearings, we had her, her, her joined at the hip charity scamming colleague, um, a, aspiring MEP, um, Sabine McNeil, dramatically end, turning to the UK the day before one of the, the appeal hearing. If you go to YouTube, you'll see the video and they're surrounded. They're surrounded by agents. They're surrounded by counterintelligence agents in this in this um, in this charade, so. this theatrical yes, yeah, this charade. And if you compare with, well, you compare Belinda McKenzie's behaviour in this recent video with her behaviour at the um, church church in the church video where Ray Savage um, said had his fifteen minutes of fame, you'll see that Belinda McKenzie and the FBI agent Christine Ann Sands, you'll see them clearly playing supporting role to Ray Savage. And um, they they become they're pretty transparent these um these uh, how can I say, what are they? Um, controlled opposition. Once you know, they're pretty transparent. And she she continues to have a speak, but there are I think the authorities are are, are on her case about the charity scamming. And there are other, there are a few people who are not best pleased with them, with the uh, Mackenzie friends. That's what I'd say. Particularly in regard to their lies um, regarding Sabine McNeil releasing um, releasing the videos onto the internet. So there's quite a lot going on, and the uh, Cointel are attempting to tavis speak and and spin and spin the the events. But um, they're making, they're bungling so much, and and because of Ricky Dem and so many, so many of the cult secrets are being, being laid bare, they're having problems. 
and, and he's having and he's having problems you can see and so we're um yeah we're just watching we're watching a bit of the fallout and um we're um we're thankful for the for the increasing support because the public are neither evil nor foolish as powerfully suggested and um and they're making their presence felt and their displeasure at what's going on in this case because it's quite obvious and the cult they really don't know what to do but it's quite simple there's a simple way out for them there, there was a beautiful article that you sent written by somebody about somebody confronting ricky during the trial yes, yes. no 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 it's the other way around it's it was ricky he, he aggressively confronted uh, one of the peaceful supporters who been sitting there and uh, be, uh, minding his minding own his business, <laughs> and uh, what he's uh, he he started to attack him. Yeah, being been of course safe, feeling safe in the uh, court uh, right. where police is nearby and uh, his uh, legal advisors are nearby who um, try to calm him down. But you can see that he's nervous, huh? Yeah, the yeah energy. he should be. I could imagine wow. that. You can imagine how much trouble he's in with uh, society in general. You can imagine how much trouble he's in with the cult. Uh-huh. Yeah, especially uh-huh. after his, um, oh, his BBC. His BBC stunts. <laughs> Oh, that they, was... they don't like to talk about it very much. Even in the court, they try to avoid this issue. They avoid right. it almost as much because, as talking about the tattoos. Yes, because what happened, Because um, in his interview, he's saying that uh, uh, after being questioned, um, so what, what this interview was about, his interview on the 15th of September, the, the only police, interview, the police only interview. police interview where he was invited for the... Um, for the interview where he was um, plus free, three. caution plus three interview called, where he was free to leave any moment, um, even, though, even, though the, uh, even though the criteria for arrest been been satisfied twice, and on that day when he was at the interview, it has been satisfied second time. Um, the children, so when the, when the doctors, when the doctors, yeah, when the doctors' report has arrived, you know, remember at this point, doctors' report has not been dismissed or discredited by Puffley. However, so in this interview by a uh, BBC interview, he's saying that um, he, yeah, he was asked about being a leader and eating babies and all this. But in reality, he's only been asked about one incident which children have never alleged. So he lied on, on the national TV. Uh, and because he could not say the truth, otherwise he would compromise uh, police because they have obviously they haven't uh, done a good job at all. They haven't investigated that. So he had to lie. So when we confronted uh, this issue, we confronted them uh, in the court lately. They uh, they is just been dismissed. This point is has been dismissed, and they've been uh, avoiding like it like a plague. Because also, Metropolitan <laughs> Police knows that he's lying on national uh, TV, right? But they have investigated. So why they, they never came up and uh, with public statement? Uh, Puffley never came up with public statement because she saw this document. She saw the transcript of and, and um, I would imagine listened to the recording of his interview as well. So everybody knew, but uh, <laughs> everybody's no, covering up. They, they, they clutching to the straw. Right, it's it's really interesting how they're kind of coalescing around one another to protect the protect the issue. It yeah. makes a lot of sense that they would have these psychology help organizations as the first line of defense. Yeah, because anything gets out, you know, they're going to blow the whistle. And sometimes I think that that's as a psychologist myself. Sometimes I think that that was probably why it was created as the first line of defense. Because anybody think. You know, you can present a lot of problems, but you start start presenting a problem like this, hmm. and they tell you you're crazy, and oh, yeah. here go to McKinsey friends for help. <laughs> it's a filter. Yeah. It's a filter. Yeah, exactly. You need to go to Tavistock. You need to go to Tavistock for help, yeah. That's right. What, what really irritates me, though, in this case, is that the alternative media just does not cover it. 
why, You'll why, see. what bigger story? I mean, I'm talking about uh, things like Press TV, Richie Allen, um, no, forget, a forget. Corbett Report, or any of those people that pretend to cover big stories that have an uh, international import. What could be more important than this? You said it. Pretend. They're, they're pretending, pretending to be the alternative media, and I, I hate to say that because I, I love to watch these guys, no. but they're just totally ignoring this, glazing it over, well, and they all say, "Oh, you know that whole thing has been discredited months ago." Yeah, I say, "Well, show me some piece of evidence. Show me something." Never, nobody shows me anything, and, and I've got two people that are, this either. We just want to see. We just want to see the tattoos, Paul. Yeah. The same tattoos that Leon Britton had. Or yeah. has still. He, oh, he has. He still has. All right. Leon Britton. So he's not dead, apparently, Leon Britton. Then. Okay. That would be interesting. Do you think he's not dead? <laughs> Someone said he was spotted in Israel the other day. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, there's so many that aren't dead that we think are dead. Yeah, jeez. Oh, my gosh. I think he died, what, the day before the court hearing was supposed to be uh, on the dossier that he had? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. <clears throat> so this is what we want. We want to see the pubendas. Not particularly. <laughs> we want to yeah. see the, uh, the tattoos and... Yeah, we're not. No one uh, mentions the tattoos, Paul. Since psst. apparently Abraham made it all up. Yeah, psst, don't mention the tattoos. He's so that Abraham is so creative. <laughs> no, 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 and uh, yeah, and he knows all the teachers and uh, all the parents who are involved. Uh, uh, where he was uh, around the children only two months before it all happened. Two or three months, yeah. Crazy. Right, and who's the guy that had? Uh, had uh, spots on his willy. Ah, oh, what's his name? You knew all oh. about that. What's his name? What's his name? Martin, Martin. No, okay. spots on the willy. That's Hollings. Oh, Hollings. Mr. Hollings. Hollings yeah. 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 Uh, he disappeared. No one's seen him. He hasn't been seen for a while. Oh. <laughs> and a lot of them changed names. Oh, yes. Man, come on. That doesn't arouse anybody's uh, suspicion that the teachers all mysteriously left uh, the school uh, and, and the renovations it, been taking place in the school and in the, the church and in the swimming church. pool uh, and I'm sure in those uh, private residences as well they changed their the names I, I used to be a school teacher a long long time ago and those are those are positions that people stay in for 20 years I mean they never I mean, it's once you get the uh, once you get the rhythm of teaching a certain level or teaching a certain course, you pretty much you just redo it, but you modify it, you know, to uh, to add interest. But you don't leave. Not in the cult. Right? Not there. Oh, oh! The children told us that there were seven or eight schools in the area, all connected. Underground. No, all connected with the cult, if you see what I mean. And the teachers and assi teachers' and assistants, the they, they were migrating. They, from they one were school, migrating from one, from one school to another. And um, there was some pattern, and the children were explaining where they go. And the purposes of their going to other schools is to start to bring these practices in other schools. And that's what's happening. They're kind of like, like missionaries. Exactly, exactly. So they've been trained in Christ Church. They know their, 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 their skill well, their um, art well, and they're going and spread it around. What I thought was, was interesting was uh, they were doing what I thought would be a natural thing for people to do, standing around the church, and when the vicar came in and out, they would shout at him and call him what he was. Mm -hmm. But then they somehow orchestrated taking that down. Yes. Do you know the story behind that? <clears throat> yeah, they sent an FBI. They sent an FBI operative specifically. Her name's Christine Ann Sands. And they then, on, and so then they to sent, shout there. Yes, and scream then, and shout and yeah uh, to discredit to discredit the um, the people who the, the legitimate supporters. Um, uh, Belinda McKenzie, she um, 
she didn't want she didn't want to have anything to um to do with the the sunday vigils the vigils were initially when was it it was um the idea was um first muted by um nilu a young activist nilu and we and we we thought it was a good idea and we encouraged her um, but Belinda McKenzie didn't want anything to do with it. She wanted hands off Hampstead. And she wanted to go to divert people to the picnics instead. Yes, because the church, the reason they, they, they invest so much energy in them. Protecting. In, in, in redirecting the energy and protecting the church is because they continue to sacrifice children there. Because it's, um, it's an auspicious site for the cult. Um, positioned as the church is on the hill. Um, the church and the school are, are built on two dissecting ley lines and the energy um, amplif it amplifies the energy of the child sacrifice so they continue to um, they protect that that spot and they continue to um, to perform child sacrifice there and they sent um, an ex-policeman Ray Savage to redirect the energy of the vigils to the elections this is one of the um, one of their, it's a, it's a common ploy. I think it's on page 51 of the counterintelligence handbook, if you will. It's a joke. <laughs> the, same, the same trick they repeated in the, um, on the 4th of uh, August with yeah. Sabine Arrest, where they um, uh, attempted to redirect the energy of people, who, genuine supporters who came then to support Alice and Gabriel. Mm -hmm. To to follow Sabine to the uh, Colindale police station, which apparently Belinda visited uh, on numerous occasions uh, beforehand to stage this theatre with uh, Diaz Spear. He's he's um, he's a member of the um, what is it public protection um, unit? Uh, yeah, public protection unit. I'm not sure what they're protecting the public from. Possibly the truth. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. That's a, that's absolutely what they're protecting, <clears throat> or from any meaningful action that would get this problem under control. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Meaningful it's action. really an infestation of a nation. It's all over the world, but it's definitely uh, been going on a while, and might be headquartered in in the UK. Uh, there's an infestation of satanic ritual abuse of children and uh, satanic practices. And the people of the UK, they just really have to uh, have to wake up and do something about it. I can remember a long time ago, you and I were talking, Abraham, you were talking about the, this term buggering, or I guess I brought it up, yeah. and how, how it was like a normal part of the UK culture. Mm -hmm. uh, that this... Part. It was like it was like a fun kind of thing. Well, they uh, they tamer speak it <clears throat> because, uh, as as we've noted before, they they um, introduce the children at birth. They introduce them at birth to this culture of, of buggery, and they continue into their boarding schools, and then it translates into their lives in in in, in their adult lives. And this is why you find that, as we say, many MPs and many aristocracy are sodomites. It's the culture. It's not, right. you know, once you realize it's their culture, it's like certain people are vegans, we'll say. And some people, some people are sodomites. It's, it's their culture. It's their belief system. And we're challenging their belief system. And there's, there's always... There are always energetic, energetic struggles when, um, um, how would we say, Im immovable object meets irresistible force. So there, there will be energy, there will be friction, but something's got to give. Exactly. Hey, it's it's not, it's not a lifestyle choice. Having having uh, uh, this kind of sex with children is not a lifestyle choice. I want to tell. Everybody who listens to this, that's not a lifestyle choice. It's not like uh, a vegan. No. That's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. This is not a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. This is a violation of another person's uh, consciousness, not just his body, his or her consciousness. 
And it's not a lifestyle choice. It has to be stopped because it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your children if it hasn't already. And well, yeah. uh, I, I think, you know, the, I, hate to, I hate to just come down on UK, but there, this is where the, uh, the buck has to stop over there. It's the headquarters, as you said, Paul, but it's the sacrifice and the blood drinking. Now, this right. has been going on for, for thousands of years, as you know. The blood it really and the blood sacrifice. And this is it what's really driving it all. This is how they're maintaining control of the global population. This death is vibration. The child sacrifice and the sodomy and the blood right. It's, it's Talmudic. It's, it, you know, they can try and hide it, but the Freemasons, it's all Talmudic. They can, exactly. They're all doing it now, and they're doing it for power and money. And it's just a... You know where it's going to lead. They all know where it's going to lead. It's going to lead to a box in the hole in the ground. It's a death cult. And exactly. We, and we don't want anything to do with it. So no. we're, we're exposing you know, I, it. Go on, Paul. I think, I think that the UK culture... I, I, I mean, I used to... Um, I used to go there in business sometimes, and I would go there to visit because I loved it. My daughter, uh, we took her there when she was four, and when she was nine, I asked her where you wanted to go, and she could go anywhere. I was going to take her on a trip, and she said, oh, I want to go back to England. It's so beautiful there, and it is beautiful, and the culture's there, and the language is beautiful, and the, 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 the landscape is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a magical, magical place. Um, but it's now it's magical. It's, it's because it's, it's becoming, it's you know, everybody's becoming aware that it's magical in this really dark, uh, somber kind of way. And I, I just really, I really wish that, um, I don't know, people in the UK or people from all over the world could, could do something because I'd, I'd love to go back there again and uh, enjoy that that beautiful rich culture and. I enjoy uh, listening to your accent, Abraham. Uh, Thanks, Paul. <laughs> we enjoy listening to yours. But it's, 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 really, it's really English, English. Absolutely. The thing is, Paul, that, that age has passed. That, that, that age is gone. This is the future. This is the now. And that's gone. And um, it's time to let go. They, they must let go of that way of, that way of death. It's a way of exactly. death. It's not a way of life. So, do you think the uh, do you think the royal family's involved with your case, or do you think they they just float above things, making sure that everything's kept under wraps? What, what's what's yeah, your take on the, that? The royal family's involved in our case. Well, we we did trace a link with, with the money laundering because there were some some of the uh, some of the people involved in this case were involved in a money laundering scam, which. Um, had links to um, David Cameron's brother and, of course, eventually to, to, to David Cameron himself. However, we haven't, we haven't found any real links to the royal family, although there are many, there are many stories of, 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 um, of the royal family being involved in this, in this cult, which makes sense because um, all other European royal families are involved, so um, it would be strange if the British royal family wasn't. Yes, it appears, it appears that they are. It appears that they all are. Yes, it does. And uh, you probably couldn't get to be Prime Minister of England no. without, be, without some kind of involvement with this. No, you couldn't. Probably. Without heavy, yeah. Without direct heavy. involvement, yeah. Wow. Well, it's the same thing in the U.S., you know. You can't get to a high political office without being controlled. Uh, by these, be, either being involved with a cult like this or being controlled by people that are involved with a cult like this. Definitely, because he went to um, your, your, uh, Obama. He was his pupil at Jakarta International School, where a teacher, his name is Neil Bountonman, he's just been uh, sentenced to a ten, he just received a 10 year prison sentence for um, buggering, for sodomizing, sodomizing pupils at that school. And the, that 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 case has has many similarities with with the Hampstead case. Um, if you go onto it, there's a website Ungi Farm, 
That's double blog, blog. A, a blog. Oh, sorry, a blog. Yeah, double A N G I R F A N Angier Farm. We'll give you the link. You go onto Angier Farm blog spot. Brilliant. It's a brilliant blog spot, and it tells you all about the Jakarta International School situation. It's a CIA controlled school, and the school that a uh, uh, CIA controlled a uh, mind controlled sex slave Obama went to. So. The 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 um, intelligence services are, def are are involved, as evidenced by the Kinkora, an Irish, an Irish um, boys home scandal. Um, so it's known that the intelligence services are involved. Well, Obama is third generation CIA. Yeah. So if he wasn't controlled this way, he was definitely controlled the other way. I, yeah. he, there's so many questions about him. I mean, he doesn't. He can't even produce a birth certificate. So yeah. maybe we shouldn't. Perhaps we shouldn't. From what we're learning about the birth certificate. Is there anything that you guys would like to say in summary uh, before we uh, call the podcast? Well, we we would like to to thank. Um, everybody who's supporting the children and who are fighting for them and um, please don't forget that uh, there are there are a lot a lot of children are trapped in this in foster in foster care system in the cult being with within the families but children that don't want to be there and uh, <clears throat> we know now about it we're aware we know exactly what's going on we know that um, up to the very high level, the establishment is corrupted. Everybody who's been following this case had the chance to uh, to, to recognize and to witness that. And uh, this is now for uh, to act and um, in the in 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 the ways we all can. And of course, you know, where we've been, we're very appreciative and grateful for for the people who stepped in and who supported us all the way our legal team and um, people who have been doing analysis of the um, court material of the police interviews about uh, investigation report the translations <clears throat> The and, videos, uh, it's a lot of um, videos, videos, writing letters, Driftwood's letters, writing letters to all these organizations, to Home Office, to IPCC, to to the court. But we can see that in the court, we're achieving nothing in the court, and uh, there are the the way the system is set up is not for you to achieve anything. So this is this is clear. So now we uh, we must investigate other ways, whether it's common law, which never been cancelled, but is been buried Grand by Jewelry. by the Talmudic law. Uh -huh. However, nobody cancelled common law, and uh, people can, can get together in groups and make their decision um, by organizing grand juries, and. Um, you know, start to grow your own food, you know, disengage, disengage, don't support the system anymore. Don't support the abominable practice of consuming other beings, other sentient beings. Um, and remain and, vigilant. Um, remain vigilant. And remain faithful as well. Yeah, keep your faith. Keep your faith. God is on our side and everybody can see that. And we're on God's side. And we're on God's side, that's right. Mm. So, exactly. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, Do you have sir. something to say, Abraham? I'm just, I'm just happy that um, and grateful for um, for the opportunity to um, share share the story and explain explain to the people, let the people know what's going on. Yeah, let's make the most of it. That's what I'd say. And let's realize our power and claim it. This is our planet, and we need to reclaim it. That's great. Well, God bless you both and uh, keep you safe. And I like to turn, uh, before we sign off, turn to the alternative media. If you call yourself an alternative media and you have 100,000 subscribers or, or 50,000 subscribers, if you have a following, you've got to follow this case. This is a live active case. This is really important things going down here. 
if you're afraid to cover this, then get out of the business. You're right. not hitting them where it hurts. I challenge you all to investigate this case. Uh, get in touch with uh, Ella and Abraham or people that are associated with them. Get in touch with me and we can take this case further. But what's going to blow this wide open, what's going to make this thing happen is by people knowing about it. So let's get together. Let's not run from this one. Uh, this is a big deal. This, this much information um, about this vivid a case may not come again. This is, our, this is a crack in the wall. We really have to do this. I challenge all the alternative media to get on board with this thing and cover it. Get in touch with me and we'll make it happen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of This World Beyond Belief. Ellen, Abraham, I think I speak for many people in saying we all surround you with love and are, are just rooting to get your children back into the safe and loving care of you. And thank you so much for joining us today for The World Beyond Belief and um, allowing us to do what we can to be of help to you. Um, also, people who are following this case on the internet, please spread this by word of mouth because there is still a large part of the population who doesn't use internet and who is not aware of that, what's going on. And also, um, our website, uh, Hampstead Cover Up, is almost ready. We're going to be publishing it very soon. And uh, we're working on the freethehamster2.com. I mean, this is going to be live uh, shortly, within the next few days. So, yes, thank you so much again. Thank, ever, yeah. thank all the supporters. Thank you ever so much, Paul and Mindy. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, guys. God bless, and we'll talk to you next time. All right, thanks ever so much. Bye now. Bye-bye. Hold on one second. Yeah, hold we, on. Always, we always hold on, Paul. Sorry, Just Paul. packed with, with real information, you know? Yeah. Well, and you'll probably want to listen to see that you're happy with everything that you said. So shall I wait for you to do an edit, or should I just go ahead and, and put this out? Well, um... We can, we, we would, let's, le yeah, let's, we can listen our version, our recording, and... You uh, go ahead and do your... Th oh, you want to just put it out straight away, you're saying? Hello? Uh, yeah, you guys didn't say anything that was wrong. No, I think it was all It perfect. was great. We know, we never said we said anything let's, wrong. Let us listen once, at least. <laughs> this is... Okay. Just, you know what it's like? If we can I know just... what it's like. I just, it was great last time. You handed it over to me and said, just go for it. And that was wonderful. Okay. So have yeah. a listen and then uh, when are we gonna get listen? back when are to we me gonna and listen? tell me. When are yes, we go for on? it. You might want to send your copy, too. Oh, yeah, that you might want to send your copy in case your copy is better than ours. Okay, then. I, I know you like to go over everything with a fine-tooth comb, and that's perfectly okay. I just thought we'd no. straighten it out before I got started. Fine-tooth comb. Fine tooth comb, we'd have to listen to it for a week. Honestly, we're just giving it a quick once yeah. over. Just to make <laughs> okay. It. Honestly, the race is not for the swift. This is a long journey. We have to maintain a, a certain degree of integrity, if you will. Even, I absolutely even though, even though we go crazy. We did a crazy recording. We've just done a crazy recording with a fellow called Guidance 222. I know you haven't listened to it because there's information that, that you might have known about. But if you get a chance to listen to that, we've just done it with Guidance 222 and we've um, exposed the um, Brian Gerrish and Belinda. Yeah, they did listen, they did listen. Did they? Well, at the I end. So. At the end. Did, yeah. We said we heard it. Yeah. That's a good interview. Yeah. Really? It was very good. Yeah. Okay. Because at the end, I got, a bit, I got a bit upset, you know, because that was the one where we exposed that, the, we, that Ella sent an email to a guy, Brian Gerrish, and he, he passed it on to another child activist, Bill Maloney, and then he passed it on to his police informant, mate, but none of them, none of them have, have come out and showed it to it. No one said anything. These guys are activists, but they haven't said anything about the tattoos, knowing that the children are talking about tattoos, that their attackers had tattoos, and they and these two guys both know about... Leon Britton's one. Leon Britton's tattoo. Which is exactly the same. 
So they know that Leon Britton's got a tattoo. Yeah. This is from, yeah. they know two years, in 2011 or 2012, they knew about Leon Britton's tattoo. And then they get a, they get an email detailing two children talking about child murdering and sacrifice and talking about the same tattoos and drawings of the tattoos. And they say nothing. And these are, these are child yeah. activists. These are child activists. It's like primer, primer. They, yeah. they, 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 they uh, present themselves as the you know the forefront of these, the these are uh, child protection and controlled they're all opposition. agents controlled all opposition these are the controlled opposition UK column working for the government Bill Maloney. and because we've exposed them we've exposed them, and they all work together with whom with Belinda Sabine it's a little cadre of them we've caught so we've uncovered a little a little group a little coven of little counterintelligence and controlled opposition operatives yeah and we've exposed them and we've got proof that they had the that they had knowledge of um what's his name of Liam Britton's tattoo and they and they had the knowledge of these this well email. they're talking about it two yeah. years prior yeah so they, they knew are talking about they knew, it. so they knew the children's testimony was real they knew it was true they knew the ver of the veracity of the children's testimony and still they said nothing amazing you know, in the United States, how this would go down, the first, <clears throat> the first teacher that was uh, identified and was drawn in tattoos, she'd go to court. She'd, she'd drop her pants and sue, sue everybody else. She'd get a billion dollars. That's yeah, right. but these guys, they, didn't, they, don't try, even, they don't even try to clear themselves. We can say what we like about them. Yeah, exactly. Because they're not going to do a thing. Yeah, they're not going to do a thing because, okay, let's present the evidence. That's right. Well, exactly. It's That's could right. Be, it could be the result so easy. That's right. That fool's like she's got a tattoo and a big red mark on her pubenda. Yeah. Yeah, and talk about his um, dicky, his spotty, his spotty business. And talk about yeah. his mother. And, yeah, we just have to keep talking about it. Because yeah. no one wants to talk about the tattoo. And the they five, don't want to talk about the 5P mole... Which hey, Gabriel Porter. Gabriel was allowed to measure with a ruler. Is it a size of a yeah. five p or what was that a dime? America is a dime. You know, and in, in some visual artist who was really interested in something should buy ten uh, mannequins, strip the mannequins down, and and paint them just the way Gabriel and oh, uh, wow. Alicia told that us. Would be and up. Make it we'll open up that gallery and do all that. <laughs> do the tattoos, do mannequins. Very good with the mannequins and the tattoos, Paul, yeah. I think it would be perfect. And who would say, what would they do? Would they shut it down? Ah, oh, well. You wouldn't say a thing. You wouldn't say a thing about Hampstead. You wouldn't say a thing about anything. Of course anything. you would say about you... Hampstead. You have to do the Hampstead exhibition. Yeah, the Hampstead <laughs> exhibition. That's perfect. <laughs> Hampstead tattoos. <laughs> there should be an uh, there should be an artist, a, a tattoo artist somewhere in London that does Hampstead tattoos. Well, it of course there is. Them. Where else are they getting them done? For goodness sake. Yeah, right. exactly. It's crazy. And the children have tattoos as well, by the way. How about that for a freak out? Hey, how about apart, that? Apart from my children, because I wasn't involved, you have to have both oh, children, families. both parents involved. If both parents are involved, then, the children can get a tattoo. Some and the, piercing. Some of the children even had piercings. I mean, it's oh, like, oh. like, it's crazy. It's like crazy. Gabriel's friend, Cartney, for example, yeah. who had... Piercing on piercing. his on his testicle on his on his oh. on his testicle sack and the vicar piercings all up his back. I mean, as well as tattoo. Oh, it's just too. I mean, so the detail the, the, we have there are de the details are overwhelming. Yeah, it is. The case is overwhelming. I can't believe that someone could call themselves alternative media and not cover this thing because they're not alternative media. They yeah. are. They're not. They're not. Paul. This is the problem. They're not. And this is what they do because they have the resources to set themselves up as controlled opposition. And that's why when we found you, you know, when we used to hear you, dun, 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 well, please, yeah. I used to, just, used to make my skin crawl. I used to hear your voice. I used to say, if only we could make contact with those guys. And I used to think, oh, man, like you're, like you're in another universe somewhere, you know? It was crazy, and then when we just found that little way of contacting you, it was too magical. And it's great. It's, gonna, it's been great. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. We were, 
we're just a bit drained because they really you can imagine the psychic energy that they're, they're, they're projecting at us you know and, oh yeah and we're surviving oh. We had a taste of it. We just of it, had a taste we? of it. They, yeah, they completely sabotaged us, yeah. but they didn't win because we had backups. Right. Well, one oh, computer's wasn't, totally wasn't. gone. It got covered with bugs, covered and then it's bugs. gone. Oh. Yeah, it's so strange. Brand new computer. It would have been covered with bugs. They do yeah, the they magic some malware, yeah? yeah, they do that. Well, no, no, real literal real bugs. bugs were like, crawling. Real bugs. It, which they've... Some kind, they were like miniature They're like ant, ant bees. Ant bees. Ant bees. Ant bees. Ant bees. Ant bees. Uh, I wasn't covered ant with it. There were fly. just two or three. Listen, but. Ella knows that. Listen, <laughs> Ella talks about that. She says, whether well, it is in Ukraine or Romania, they do their magic and they will put flies. And then the other yes, day... Yes, it's, it's we, a manifestation of negative energy, you see. Really, because yeah. they're all doing this, whatever, witchcraft or whatever. But also, but the negative negative energy, you know, they can't do anything to you. Like, they can't touch you, for example. But they would do something to sabotage your uh, endeavor endeavors. Yes. For right. example, we had, we had, it was like really strange. But because I heard about it, it occurred to me that it could be that. For like uh, three days, days, we had a lot of flies. Three days, we they, had like uh, yeah. a swamp of flies. The we had like indoors. I, I I can't I can't tell you how many flies we would have in each room. It was like um, I don't know migration or what it was, but they stayed. They stayed. Yeah. They stayed for like three days. It was crazy. And in Jamaican culture, they talk about it. They talk about people sending a bag of flies. They send a bag of flies to swarm you. And they talk about the same the same phenomena. And so, like, they would send bugs or flies. And these are ant flies. So it's strange. I don't believe in this stuff. But obviously somebody does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't believe it's, it's happening. But the thing is, they, they can't touch us. Pardon? They have the technology to do this shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were like, are these drones? What are these bugs yeah, yeah, on our computer? <laughs> they do. If they have all kind of weapons now, waves, you know, sound, sound waves yeah. and. Uh, uh, but two. we've got love. Well, we've got love waves, so we're fine. We do, and if they could get us, they would. Absolutely. They're not getting us. Absolutely. They're not getting us. So we, you're coming out to our paradise garden, right? So keep helping us, and we'll soon be there. All right, then. right, can't wait to share juice with you guys. All right. In person. We can't definitely, wait. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Take care. We love you guys. We love you. We Bless love you. you. We, always feel, we always feel your love. Thank you. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. You have a good night. Bye -bye. Talk to you, you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.